Most of the time, information disclosure is a low or informational finding, but every now and then it's the missing key that allows us to find and exploit a vulnerability within a web application. So today we'll do a quick primer on information disclosure issues, what kind of things to be on the lookout for, and then take a look at a lab to see how we can find and exploit information disclosure issues in the wild. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's just dive in. Cyber attacks that leverage weak or stolen passwords, credentials and secrets are the world's most pervasive cybersecurity issue. And that's why I trust Keeper. Keeper Security's next generation privileged access management solution delivers enterprise grade password, secrets and privileged connection management in one unified platform. Unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless and has no implementation fees. Plus, Keeper is FedRAMP authorized. Start your 14 day free trial today at keeper.io slash TCM. And of course, there is a link in the description below. All right, so if an application unintentionally reveals sensitive information, then we call this information disclosure. Now, of course, this is really context dependent, but often as attackers, we're on the lookout for things like information about the database, like table names, column names, and even the stored data, hard-coded credentials, API keys, and source code. And it can even reveal hidden directories or endpoints and potentially give us the ability to pull off attacks like error-based injection. So how do these come about? Well, a lot of them are from misconfigurations like leaving debug mode on. There could also be an issue in the way the application has been designed to behave, making an application too wide in scope that leads to mixing internal and external services into one single application. I've seen a lot of sites that are used as a company's external sites, but also a portal for their customers or internal staff. This kind of complexity often leads to trouble later on down the road, but more often than not, information disclosure findings have very little impact. So when we find an issue like this, we need to think about how we can extract the most out of it and how it can help us continue on our path to uncovering impactful issues. It really depends on how well we utilize what's given to us. The same goes for reporting information disclosure issues. Carefully consider the impact or the potential impact and report accordingly. For example, Minor leakage of technical information such as the framework version should be considered differently to the leakage of information stored in the database. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at a lab. Okay, so here we are for our first lab and we're finding an information disclosure issue that on one hand is fairly low impact, but it does give us the information we need to exploit a target. Now, if the target was up to date with the latest patches, then it might be a completely different story. But as we'll see, it gives us some critical information on how we might move forward and achieve exploitation. So let's go ahead and take a look. And what we're gonna do is actually, let's go through the process of how we'd find this in the wild, because the solution to this one is pretty simple. And we'll often see things in the URL. So here we have a product ID and we might be thinking, ah, oh, hey, maybe this is vulnerable to SQL injection. Maybe this is vulnerable to some other issue. So let's come over to to web suites and HTTP history. And let's take a look at this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fuzz this endpoint. So I'm just gonna press Control I, send this to intruder. And here we mark our payload. And then we can just leave it as sniper on the attack type, come to payloads. And then here I'm going to go for Fuzzing quick, fuzzing full, let's go for a quick fuzz. So start attack and we can see we get quite a lot of different content lengths, which is a little bit suspicious. So we know that something happened and all we're gonna do is, let's say we come into here, come into the response and here we are. So we get internal server error. So this is a very verbose error message. So this is, something that we should be on the lookout for. And if this didn't lead to anything else, I'd probably report this as a low finding and be like, hey, you should probably turn off verbose error messages because at some point in the future, it could leak something sensitive. But down at the very bottom, we have Apache struts 2.3.31. And if we copy this and come over to Google, 
and we just search for an exploit, we can see that we have remote code execution for this version. So, and this is obviously an issue. So we'd have to go ahead and prove that this is what it says it is and go ahead and try and exploit the target and prove the concept. And it might have been that there were other ways to find the version here, but in this case, this was fairly straightforward and obviously gives away some sensitive information. So let's grab this, come back to the lab and let's submit the solution. And we solve our first lab. So we have one more to go through. Since that one was pretty straightforward, I thought we would find one that is a little bit more realistic. So let's take a look at that. All right, so for our second lab, we're actually going to steal some information out of the version control history. And we don't see this quite so often, but occasionally if you see a .git file when you're fuzzing for directories, then this might be a clue and you might be able to steal some sensitive information. So let's go ahead and find that file first. So I'm just gonna come into a new terminal and we're just gonna use fuff to do this. So I'm just gonna grab this address, dash u, fuzz, and the word list is gonna be, let's say, user share, word lists, let's go with derb, and let's just go with common.txt. And straight away it's found .git slash head, and this of course is a key finding and something that we should investigate. So if you ever see .git, then maybe we can dump the git file and find some interesting information. So here we can see that we can indeed get to this. And of course we can see some log information here and things like this. So interesting that there are two items in the log and one is removal of admin password from config. So hopefully we can go in and see that commit and see the old information that was removed. So let's come to here and let's sudo pip install git dumper. I think there are a bunch of tools that will do this. Looks like we're already good to go. So if we git dumper, and then actually don't know how to use this tool. So the URL and the output directory. So let's just come into temp, make a directory called out, and then git dumper, grab this again, paste, and then let's just say, let's give it a full path slash temp slash out. And looks like it's grabbed everything. So let's cd into out and we have our .git here. And let's take a look at some of the logs. So I think we can just git log and here we have two. So we have Carlos Montoya and both of them. Remove admin password from config and this one adds skeleton admin panel. So I think if we just git show this, here is the removed line. So this is in red and you can see the minus. And then here you can see the line that was added. And this is of course being added as an environment variable. So let's copy this. And I think if we come back to the application, hopefully we can use this to, is it Carlos's password or is it the admin password? There we go. And we log in as the administrator. So, and I think to finish up the lab, all we need to do is come to admin panel and bye bye Carlos. He's obviously having a bad day as usual. And that's it. And we solve the lab. So once again, information disclosure, really, really important. And it comes in all shapes and sizes from generic error messages to errors and logic issues that can be used to verify injection. And of course here, if you're using Git, you don't want to be uploading all of your version control history to your production system. So that's it for this video. And I hope it helps you get the most out of information disclosure issues during your next pen test or while looking at your next bug bounty target. If you have any questions, then of course, drop them down in the comments below or swing by one of our weekly live streams. Catch you next time.